Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Rundown. I'm Chris Sixon with Info Weather Catholic Media, and today is Saturday, March 6, 2021. This is episode 10. Let's get into it. This week in liturgy, nothing too crazy. We'll have the third Sunday of Lent this Sunday. A couple commemorations early in the week. Other than that, uh, the next crazy thing we got liturgy-wise is we're wearing rose on next Sunday, March 14th, Pi Days for those mathematicians out there. Weather-wise, nothing in terms of winter weather. Uh, it's going to be pretty short for this whole video, but uh, even the weather section here, the severe weather, isolated severe weather throughout the week throughout the United States. Could see something in the southern plains. We'll talk about more about that when we get to the Norman weather update. Here uh, we have our tropical weather uh, potentials. We do have a storm in many of these areas. The first one, the red area located near um, north of New Zealand, there is one storm there right now. There is one also south of Indonesia to the east of, or sorry, west of Australia, as well as one south of India. And there's also a low chance within 24 hours of one forming near or over Madagascar, with a high chance over the next uh, week, according to the Climate Prediction Center. If we move on here to the Columbus weather, we're looking around 40 degrees for the rest of the weekend, but we'll be back up and above 60 for most of the rest of the week. After we get some rain Thursday and Friday, we'll be back down to around 50 for high temperatures heading into next weekend. As for Norman, we're going to be above 60 all week, windy and 70 on Tuesday and Wednesday. We could potentially hit 80 degrees on Wednesday with 70 degrees in storms on Thursday and a lot of rain. Uh, and we're going to be in the 50s next weekend as a result of that rain. It'll cool us down a whole bunch. Um, so, you know, we get what we get with that. Moving on to U.S. News and Sports. Well, we do have March Madness starting uh, next Sunday as well. That'll be at um, 6 p.m. Eastern when we get our brackets out. The first game, I believe, is the 18th uh, in terms of the first four. We're also going to talk about the end of masks right here. Uh, so let's get into that. Our friend Joe Biden uh, called this Neanderthal thinking. Um, yeah, so uh, he, he doesn't agree with people ending the mask, the governors ending the masks, um, which I get. Uh, but it was a target on Republican governors. And if that were a different class of people other than Republicans, the media might have something different to say about it. And that's all I'm going to say there. But uh, as we can see here, plenty of states don't have a mask mandate as it is, and plenty more states are joining them in the blue. Uh, purple doesn't have it, and orange uh, currently still requires masks statewide as of uh, two days ago. Let's get in. Speaking of coronavirus, two coronavirus ready update. Number 10 of the year, daily new cases going down relatively across the board in the United States, as well as daily new deaths. We're below one death per capita in every single state uh, per day, uh, except for um, Virginia, but Virginia's just currently catching up on old deaths, I believe, at the moment, so no big deal there. Current hospitalizations, also not a big deal overall. Uh, doing pretty well in terms of improvements across the United States. North Dakota down to only two new, uh, two current hospitalizations per capita in this state. The variants really aren't, uh, are of more concern than, I guess, the other things. There's also a variant in New York now. The CDC doesn't have numbers on that yet, um, or at least aren't publicly sharing those numbers. 48 states have it, uh, but for some reason, the map shows four states without it. I don't make the map. The CDC does. The CDC also gives us the numbers, so uh, don't complain to me. In terms of the South African variant, we're coming up on uh, 75 cases across 17 states, East Coast, West Coast, Texas, and Illinois, so the most popular areas in the United States, and as well as the Brazilian variant now into seven states, and we're up to 13 cases. Oklahoma only has one variant case across all three of the variants reported here. The infections over time, we're now using the CDC infection prediction. So we can see they're going down over the next four weeks pretty steadily 
according to the cone of uncertainty. We know we love the cone here on Info Weather. We'll talk about more uh, of that when we get into tropical weather season. People vaccinated per 100, also very high across many states, 22.7 in New Mexico leading the way. Over a million vaccine doses have been distributed, yet only 54 million people have received that first dose, which is about 16% of the population. And around half that number has received the second dose. The Dakotas, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and of course, again, New Mexico leading the way there. That's right, Oklahoma leading the way. Uh, not leading the way, but in the top couple. I suppose we can mention Wyoming as well, also above that 10 per 100 mark. Uh, that's 10% of the population having received uh, the second dose already. Here in the United States, we're still not quite to that 30 million total case mark yet. Recoveries broke uh, 20 million this week. We also saw current cases go down below 9 million for the first time in a while. We go ahead and look at the other states as well. We do see California went up, as well as Arizona, Virginia, Maryland, Kentucky, and Indiana. But other states continue to go down, most notably of those New York and Florida, definitely helping the overall U.S. change in cases. Worldwide, we uh, really don't have a too much of a change. Worldwide went down less than the U.S. went down in terms of current cases. The U.S. going down around 200,000 cases. Worldwide only down around 100,000 cases. We see the United Kingdom, Spain, and Russia join the United States in terms of going down since last week. France is in second place for the moment. The United Kingdom dropped out of the million mark in terms of current cases for the first time in quite a while. Again, we're watching Brazil very closely as that Brazilian variant has not been very favorable to them. Mexico and Poland also uh, moving up fairly steadily, although they remain at 9 and 10. Spain went below Italy as a result of Italy increasing and Spain decreasing significantly in the past several uh, days. U.S. Catholic news real quick. We're going to talk about the vaccine, John, the Johnson & Johnson again, and the biggest story in Catholic America uh, we'll talk more about that and see if that title there interests you at all. Uh, nothing changed on this slide since last week. Uh, again, the, the best vaccine, oh, I guess I changed the first bullet point title, but um, from the best vaccine to the worst, the, the best is we get a vaccine without attachment to fetal cell lines. Our second best option is the Pfizer and Moderna, which, it, which is morally permissible to use. Uh, because it only used fetal cell lines during the testing process and doesn't actively use them in the development of the vaccine itself. Now, the Johnson & Johnson, which was approved shortly after the rundown was posted last uh, weekend, now that one uses actively uses fetal cell lines in the development. Now, there are no fetal cell lines actually in the vaccine, but it is developed using them. Every, every vaccine is developed using them, as well as AstraZeneca. Uh, both of those are like that. So that's our third option down the line. Uh, and then, of course, it's really the fourth option if you count Pfizer and Moderna as two separate ones. Uh, and again, the first option doesn't really exist at the moment. So it is kind of the third option anyways. Biggest story in Catholic America outside of politics it's right, my only crack on Joe Biden this week was the Neanderthal thinking comment, which I'm really not going to say a whole lot else on. Um, and, and Biden actually had a decent week aside from that comment, um, at least in terms of the Catholic perspective. Now, in terms of the economic perspective, some might offer their two cents. But anyways, the biggest story in Catholic America outside of politics we uh, had a priest in Chicago accused of sexual misconduct or abuse uh, several decades ago was when it supposedly had occurred. And so we placed on leave. He left Father Michael Fledger. Uh, the state determined that the claims made against him were baseless. The diocese uh, has not returned him to service since then. So his parish is unhappy with that. So the parish council, I guess, uh, it, it's very unsure exactly 
who's calling the shots here at this parish and what's going on because of course there's a, an administrator in charge of the parish in the meantime another another priest uh, and they decided to withhold their monthly funds that they give to the diocese from the parish so that's a bit odd um, it, the exacts of how uh, that's going to go down is of course off in the air but you know it is what it is let's move on to international catholic news uh, stay tuned for more updates on the fledger situation uh but i have a feeling we're just gonna have to wait and see on that biggest story in international catholic news and the only thing we're going to talk about this week is pope francis visiting iraq iraq is less than one percent catholic he's the first pope to visit iraq and iraq is a mostly muslim country that doesn't come as a surprise to many people but the problem is that there's also muslim extremists there and those people have been known to persecute Christians. Um, and, of course, that includes Catholics. Um, and so Pope Francis is there to hopefully give the Christian people hope. He's also there, uh, will have conversations with uh, at least one prominent Shiite leader, uh, one of the Muslim sects. Um, so that will be uh, very nice to hopefully have some level of dialogue between um, different faiths and, and build bridges in that respect. Also of note, I saw this week um, Pope Francis' en encyclical Fertili Tui, Fertili Tutti, I'm saying that completely wrong, uh, was translated into Russian by Muslims. Um, so, uh, and apparently the Pope responded very favorably to that in hopes that it helped to build more bridges. With that being said, this has been The Rundown. I've been Chris Dixon. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is our now our main posting for The Rundown. I'll see you guys next time.